thought I'd do a video about making cork real seat arbors. I'm going to be using wine cork to make an arbor. Most people don't use cork arbors simply because they're expensive, but if you or somebody you know drinks wine occasionally, then you might have a source of free wine corks to use for making real seat arbors. And cork makes a good real seat arbor material. It'd be real easy for me to make these on my lathe, but I thought I'd also discuss a jig you can make it's kind of a two-in-one jig that you can make yourself if you have a drill press and you can do similar operations that you do on a lathe using a drill press in this jig. A lot of people don't have room in their shop for a full-blown lathe, a woodworking or a metal lathe. One option would be a drill press because a drill press has a small footprint meaning it doesn't take up a lot of floor space because most of its size is vertical. They're taller than they are wide. So if you have a small shop space, then a drill press might be a good option for you. And it would allow you to do some things that you would normally do on a lathe. So what this two-in-one jig will allow you to do is to fairly accurately drill your center hole through a cork. And it will also allow you to turn down the outside diameter by sanding. So in order to make this two-in-one jig, I'm going to start out with a board that's been cut down the middle, but not all the way through the board. And I cut this on a table saw. If you don't have a table saw, you could just as easily cut a slot in a board with a hand saw. Well, maybe not just as easily, but you could get it done. It wouldn't be a big deal. I'm just using a piece of three quarter inch plywood, but you could use pine. You could use any type of wood you wanted to use for this. And one thing I have on my drill press is a table that I made myself and it's got an adjustable fence on it and it's also got an adjustable stop. This will help you out a lot if you're using the jig that I'm going to show you because you can set it up real easily and lock it in place. And if you need to take it off the table and adjust things, you can put it back on later and recenter it. And I'll show you how to do that also. If you don't want to make a homemade table for your drill press, you can also buy ready-made drill press tables and they usually run anywhere from about $50 on up from there. You can spend as much as you want on one, but a basic table would be all you'd really need to do this. I'm just going to center up the slot that I cut on this board with my drill bit. And I've got a center punched mark here on the board already. That's what I want to align with. That will put my hole I'm gonna drill in about the center of that line. Then I'm just gonna take a forstner bit. This is a 7 8 of an inch forstner bit. And wine corks vary somewhat in, in their diameters. And I'm gonna show you how to deal with that here in just a minute. This 7 8 of an inch should fit most wine corks. And the ones that don't fit, we can work around that also. If the wine corks you have are bigger in diameter or smaller in diameter than the ones I'm using, then you might want to adjust your hole size. A Forstner bit drills a pretty clean hole. It doesn't leave real jagged inside edges. I'm just going to use that Forstner bit and drill down through this piece of plywood and that will leave me with a hole that I will clean up a little bit with sandpaper just so there's not any splinters or anything in it. And now with that slot that's cut in this jig, you'll be able to clamp one end against your table fence and it will squeeze down a little bit on the cork. If you have a tight fitting cork, then this will be plenty to hold it. If you don't, what you can do is wrap a piece of cardboard around it. You don't want to overlap it because that will change the, the center location of the hole in, in relation to the outside diameter of the hole in the jig. So you don't want to double it up anywhere. Just leave it open on one end where the slot is and wrap it around your cork and drop it in place and clamp it down and you should be good to go. And from there, we'll just drill a hole down through the center of this. And it's not gonna be exactly perfect. Usually it's off just a hair on your exit side. And that's for a variety of reasons. The wine cork might not be flat on the bottom. It might not be sitting perfectly flat. So it can get off just a hair, but this cork's plenty big enough around where I'm going to take enough off the outside diameter that will make it more concentric with that center hole. I'm going to be using what's called a center drill, and I'm using that because they tend to run pretty straight and true, but really any drill bit will work. You'll just use whatever drill bit is the size that you need in order to fit onto your arbor that you're going to turn it on. Now I'm just going to drill all the way through that cork and then I'm going to unclamp it from the table, take it out and take a look at it, make sure everything looks right and that the hole through the cork is fairly well centered up in the cork itself. So that's the first part of this jig. And like I said, it's a two-way jig. 
we'll be able to use it for something else too. Just wanted to show real quick, I'm going to loosen my fence and stop and move everything around. I'm going to show you how to realign this jig. You just put the drill bit that you originally used to drill the hole with. In my case, it's a 7 8 of an inch Forstner bit. I'm going to put that same drill bit back in and run it into the hole of the jig and then align my fence and stop up to the jig and that will get me recentered so I can drill more holes through cork after I've adjusted my fence I can go right back to my center position. The second function of this jig will be to carry a bearing in the other end of the board in order to prevent a mandrel being deflected while you're sanding on some cork. And I'm just using a short length of threaded rod. You could use whatever you need for whatever size cork you're putting on here. In order to reduce slippage of the cork on the shaft here, I'm gonna install a washer on each end and two nuts. And I'm gonna use the nuts as jam nuts. I wanna tighten the first nut on each side down onto the cork pretty snugly in order to push that washer into the cork and cause a little friction there on both ends of the cork where it's com being compressed just a little bit. And then I'm going to put a jam nut up against the first nut and use two wrenches to lock those jam nuts in place. And that will reduce the amount of slippage that the cork has while I'm turning it and sanding it down. The end of the threaded rod, I have cut down the threads somewhat. You can chuck it up in your drill press and turn it and use a file to cut down the threads on that end in order to fit into a bearing. The bearing I'm using is sized at half inch outside diameter, 3 sixteenths of an inch inside diameter, and 0.196 inch thickness. I chose to use that bearing because I had one. Uh, you can order them off of eBay or something like that. They're real cheap. Just get a shielded bearing because there's going to be cork dust getting all over it. and You don't want it getting down in the balls and in, in between the balls and the race of the bearing. And what I'm going to do is drill a hole in this jig and make it just a little bit smaller in diameter than my bearing. So I need my hole size one step below a half inch. I'm gonna drill that hole tighter like that. That way the bearing has to be knocked into place and it won't move once it's in there. So I'm gonna drill that hole. In order to make the bearing get started a little easier, I'm just gonna chamfer the edge of the hole a little bit, kind of taper it just a little bit. You could use a countersink or whatever you got just to kind of ream that top of that hole with a little bit of a bevel on it. And that'll help get your bearing going in there fairly straight. And then I'm going to use a plastic block, a piece of block that I had and knock that bearing down into the hole flush with the top of the wood. And it's going to be tight enough in there that it's not going to want to move. Now I can install my mandrel into my drill chuck and push the bottom end of the mandrel with the threads that have been removed into the bearing and then tighten my drill chuck up and turn it on just to make sure everything is running straight like it should. Clamp my jig to the fence again and now I can start sanding on this cork. And for the real seat that I'm using this arbor on, I need a 16 millimeter outside diameter. I'm actually going to take it down just a little smaller than that to allow some space for the epoxy between the cork and the real seat. But I'm just going to rough it out with a strip of mesh drywall sanding paper. I'm going to get it roughly close to my size and then I'm going to use a block of wood with some sandpaper wrapped around it to take it down to my final size and i'm doing that because it'll help me keep it straighter than i could do by hand with the little piece of sheetrock sandpaper in a strip and then you just sand it down to size and you've got an arbor that you can put in your real seats and if you get the wine corks for free that's about as economical of a arbor as you can get and cork does work extremely well it's rot resistant mold resistant water resistant epoxy sticks to it well and it's got a lot of compression strength too and i also thought i'd mention that you can realign this end of the jig the same way i did the first end of the jig just put your mandrel in there 
put the jig on and run the mandrel down into the bearing and then move your fence and your stop back into position and clamp everything back down again and you're recentered and ready to go that's all i got for this video i hope y'all enjoyed it and i hope you can find some use for this jig in your shop if you got any comments or improvements for the idea just leave them down in the comments below and i appreciate y'all watching and i'll talk to y'all later